Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and today we're going to learn about one final derivative rule, something called the quotient rule. And what this is, is it's a rule that tells us how to take the derivative of the quotient or the division of two functions, as long as you know the derivatives of the top and bottom individually. This rule tells you how to combine those derivatives to get the derivative of the overall fraction. Okay, so we're gonna see that the quotient rule, it's a lot nastier than any of the derivative rules that we've seen earlier. It's a lot nastier than the product rule, which told us how to find the derivative of the product of two functions. And it's also a lot nastier than the, the chain rule, which told us how to find the derivative of the composition of two functions. Okay, but fortunately, we're also gonna see that we don't actually need the quotient rule. It just follows from other rules that we've already developed. So we'll see why that is as well. Okay, so let's just dive right into the quotient rule and we'll explain in a minute after we've done an example why it doesn't actually matter, why you don't need it, okay? So we're gonna see that, yeah, it's kind of nasty. The quotient rule tells us how to find the derivative of you know, a function divided by a function and it's this big, ugly rule, okay? So this is the rule here. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared, okay? So it's this big, ugly mess. It's a lot harder to remember than the product rule or the chain rule. Let's go through an example first though, just to make sure that we actually understand what it's saying, okay? So, yeah, ugh, it's a big ugly mess. Let's go through an example though, okay? So how do we find the derivative of a function like this? And the key thing to, to identify here, the reason that we're gonna use the quotient rule is because, hey, it's a function whose derivative I know how to take divided by another function whose derivative I know how to take. That tells me quotient rule. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste down just what the quotient rule is, just to remind myself. And now all I've gotta do is I've gotta compute all the bits and pieces of it, okay? So remember F, that's gonna be the top. G, that's gonna be the bottom. So my first job is identify what is the top, what is the bottom. Unfortunately, that's not too hard with the quotient rule, right? They're just sort of sitting right there. So the top, well, that's two X minus three. Okay, so that's what my f of x is gonna be. That's gonna go in that slot. But I also need f prime. I need the derivative of the top. Okay, so derivative of 2x minus 3, we'll just use your power rule. Derivative of 2x becomes 2. Derivative of minus 3 becomes 0, so that just goes away. So the derivative of f is just 2. And now we just plug those into these two slots down here, and we're one step closer to having our overall derivative. Okay, so I just plugged into the f prime slot and into the f slot. All right, so that does it for everything that I need to do with the top of that fraction. Now I need to identify my g piece, the bottom of the fraction, okay? So g of x, yeah, it's just that piece on the bottom. It's the x squared plus 3x minus 2. So that's going to go in this slot and in this slot, okay? But I also need g prime. I need to find the derivative of g. Unfortunately, again, I can just use my power rule to find the derivative of that x squared plus 3x minus 2. It's just 2x plus 3. Okay, and now I'm just gonna plug these guys into the different slots down in this formula down here, okay? And when I do that, I mean, I get this big, long, ugly mess. At this point, we're done all of our calculus though, okay? We've done all of the differentiating we need to do, but maybe we'll go one step further and simplify that a little bit. So I'm just gonna combine as many terms on the top here as I can, because a bunch of the x squared and x in constant terms, after I multiply that out and simplify it down as, mu as much as I can, it's gonna get a lot simpler. I'm not going to expand out the bottom though, okay? And in general, this is probably a good idea. Don't expand out the bottom when you use the quotient rule because it's just going to be some big, long, ugly thing squared. And when you square it, it's just going to become a bigger, longer, uglier thing. It's not actually any simpler. Just leave it factored as something squared, okay? So altogether, we get this as our derivative of this fraction up here. Okay, so fine, we know how to use the quotient rule, but where does it come from? Where's that big, long, ugly formula come from? And I've said a couple of times now that we don't actually need it, so why not, okay? What makes it sort of redundant? And what makes it redundant, why we don't need it, is it just follows from the product rule and the chain rule, which we've already learned about, okay? So if you're comfortable with the product rule, taking the derivative of a product of two functions, and you're also comfortable with the chain rule, taking the derivative of a function within another function, then you can do the quotient rule and you don't actually need to remember it. So here's how it works. The trick is to realize that any quotient of two functions can be written as a product of two functions. You can always write f divided by g as f times g to the power minus one, right? Remember, to the power minus one means one divided by. Okay, so I'm just rewriting it in a weird way as a product. And the point of that is, well, now I've got a derivative of a product I don't need the quotient rule anymore. I've already got the product rule. So I know how to take the derivative of this. I use the product rule. 
So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna use the product rule on this term over here and see what I get. Okay, I'm gonna go through this calculation kind of quickly just because we're hopefully comfortable with the product rule at this point. Okay, so what I had was a product of two functions. I wanna take its derivative. Product rule tells me I take the derivative of the first function, multiply it by the second function, and then add first function times the derivative of the second function. Okay, great. So I'm reasonably happy with this. I want to do a little bit of simplification first, okay? So I remember g of x to the power of minus one, what that means is one divided by g of x. So I'm gonna rewrite this first term as a fraction just to simplify things down a little bit, okay? So it's f prime over g, and then plus, I've still got this funky second term here. Okay, the second term, I'm not too happy with it yet, okay? And the reason for that is I've got, I've got to take the derivative of g of x to the power of minus one. And that is actually a function inside a function, right? That's a composite function. The inside function, the inner function is g of x. And the outer function is the function to the power minus one, right? It's x to the power minus one or equivalently one over x. Okay, so I've got a function inside of a function. So the way I take the derivative of that is I've got to use the chain rule, okay? So I'm gonna highlight this piece here. I've got to use the chain rule on it. G is my inner function to the power minus one is my outer function. Okay, so let's use the chain rule. And when you use the chain rule, again, I'm sort of skipping over a calculation here. It's just use the chain rule on it. And what you're gonna get is you're gonna get, well, this, first off, the plus sign here flipped to a minus sign. That's because, you know, you have to the power minus one. When you do the power rule on it, the minus one comes out in front. And then the new exponent is minus two, which gives me this squared term on the bottom. And then you do the chain rule, you multiply by the derivative of the inside, which gives you this g prime on top, okay? So all of these three terms, they all just come from the chain rule, okay? And then if you just simplify, throw everything over a common denominator and simplify as much as you can, you just get this formula over here, which if you go back a bunch of slides and compare it to what we had earlier, that's exactly the quotient rule. Okay, so by using the product rule and then the chain rule, you get exactly the quotient rule. So it's kind of nothing new. Any problem that you can solve with a quotient rule, you can solve with these two other rules that we already knew. Okay, so to drive that point home, let's go back to the exact same example that, that we went through with the quotient rule a couple minutes ago, and let's find its derivative without even using the quotient rule now. Okay, so this is the same function that we had a few slides ago, 2x minus 3 divided by x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay, but now the trick to be able to avoid using the quotient rule, like if you forget it or something, what you do is you write it as the top times the bottom to the power minus one. So I'm just gonna rewrite it. This is the top that I had, two x minus three, and this is the bottom that I had. It was x squared plus three x minus two, all to the power minus one now, because it's down on the bottom. Okay, and now that you have it as a product of two functions, you can just use the product rule on it. Okay, so it's derivative of the first. Well, derivative of two x minus three is just two times the second. Okay, so then that goes there. Okay, and then plus the first. So this two x minus three, ah, it goes down there. And then times the derivative of the second. Ah, so the derivative of the second one goes over there. Okay, and that gets you most of the way there. All we've got to do now is take the derivative of this last term over here. And we just have to be a little bit careful. Use the chain rule when you take the derivative of that, right? Our inner function is this x squared plus 3x minus 2. And the outer function is the function that raises it to the power minus 1. Okay, so use the chain rule on that bit. And when you do, three things happen. This plus sign out in front turns into a minus sign. And again, the reason for that is because you're using the power rule on this outer function, the minus 1 comes out in front as a minus one, okay? And then the new exponent is minus two, which gets you a squared and gets it on the bottom, and then times the derivative of the inside. So times two x plus three. So that's why you get a two x plus three on the top. Okay, so when you see that as your final answer, if you go back a whole bunch of slides and compare that to the answer that we got using the quotient rule, it likely looks very, very different, right? This does not look like the answer that we got back using the quotient rule. But if you simplify it down, it actually is the exact same thing. It's just written in a different form. So if you write this as a fraction and then get a common denominator and simplify as much as you can, you are gonna get this exact same final answer that we found earlier using the quotient rule, okay? So it's the same thing, just written in a different form. All right, so that'll do it for derivative rules. We now know how to take the derivative of every type of function that we need to for this course, at least. Okay, so thanks for watching.